Welcome to It Takes Two. I'm Blair. I'm Chris. And today we'll be talking about the after party for Married at First Sight, season 18, episode three. Listen here, this is the third episode of the after party. And this episode, we are actually out of the weddings. And this episode was actually really, really, really good to me. You ready, Blair? I'm ready. Let's go. So we've got David, Camille, Ikechi, and of course, Keisha knight Pulliam there as the host um, for the after party. Yeah. We see David and Michelle get married. Mm -hmm. Um, David shares that he accidentally went up to her sister thinking it was her mom at one point okay um, but then we see their first convo and he wanted to tell her everything rather than it coming out later from someone else yeah so they have the do-over segment and he says that he would have probably enjoyed the wedding and let the moment play out instead of putting everything out there for her to know about him living at, at home and the cigarettes um at that time <laughs> hey, pretty much <laughs> everything right yeah and Keisha tells him, like, look, people family differently. Yeah. You guys are coming together and your family structure and how you do living at home and, you know, all that type of stuff is mm-hmm. different for each family. So that's just something that you guys have to come to an agreement and understanding on when you decide to merge lives. Yeah. The thing I liked about this this segment was that he actually got to see mm-hmm. like his wife basically break down yeah. and stuff like that. And. Do you think his excuse or his reasoning is good enough? Basically, like, I just wanted her to know from me first um, and just basically put everything out on the table. Do like you think um, that reason is good enough? Yeah, I felt like those are good intentions. Okay. Um, I can respect that rather than somebody hiding something <laughs> and, and you know, letting it come out from somebody else or, you know, not saying anything until, you know, the their back is up against the yeah. wall. So I think he had good intentions, but I just don't think he had good timing. Yeah. And I think what happened, what I realized is that even though he have good intentions, I think he hit the nail on the head when he said, maybe I shouldn't have compounded everything. Yeah. It's kind of hard to say, I live with my mom and I smoke cigarettes. Mm -hmm. It's like, those are like, wait, wait a minute. (laughs) Like, like what's going on here? Mm -hmm. So I, I think he had good intentions, but I also think even though the intention can be good, it came off as if like a kid was talking. Mm -hmm. It came off as someone who don't have the maturity to know place timing you mm-hmm. get what i'm saying what to say when to say it you get what i'm saying i don't think to blair point what she said in the episode doing it at your reception is the place to do it mm-hmm. you get what i'm saying maybe once y'all buy yourselves maybe when y'all get back to the suite and just say first of all since you only smoke socially i think you should just stop doing that yeah just you know, don't do like, it don't and, don't, and mention don't even it. mention it yeah don't mention it just stop you <laughs> get what it's what not saying? like you're gonna do it at the house exactly and right? just don't smoke when you're outside yeah right <laughs> just stop so so like it's one of those things to where it's like you should just when y'all was alone should have been like hey i just wanted to be forthcoming and just say hey i live with my parents um and then give the whole backstory on that but it just came off as if he's like you know what i'm gonna be honest because you know the truth is everything and you know when you're young you just feel like i have to tell the truth right now but when you grow up it's place and timing and things like that it makes it because the whole point of telling the truth is that other person got to digest it and be able to receive it and he just basically bombarded her with so much truth that she's like i'm about to break down in this bathroom yeah you know then we see the performance at Ikechi's wedding. Yeah. We learned that he did not write the song, but he was on tour with his friend who wrote this song and they mm-hmm. performed it together for years. And he always said that if he ever got married, he would want that song at his wedding. Stop right there. This is the definition. Of, I'm going to put the homies on. Mm-hmm. Because for, for one, what, what, like, like I understand that, but like you brought this man to perform from Germany. Mm-hmm. You suggested that he come from Germany. I was like, and then we find out here, because we didn't know while watching it live, you didn't even write the song. So it's like, it's his song. Mm-hmm. It's probably his band. Like, it comes off as you chase the show, you finally got on the show, you're on camera. While I'm on camera, people go like the song and they go want to know who this is. The song ain't that good. You get what I'm saying? Like, I I ain't going to look for the guy. So it just came off as very performative. Yeah, very. Uh, David's brother gifted him a book of how... <clears throat> David's brother gifted him a book of how to be a husband and a better man. Mm-hmm. Um, it catchy and the conversation with the cousin. We talk about that. And he says that the last engagement didn't work because he was a young man trying to navigate himself and art. What? <laughs> what <laughs> does that mean? It means exactly what it said. <laughs> Nothing. Okay. And it didn't work out together. Okay. Now he's willing to communicate and be open. Um, he's been writing to his future wife. He has a book. I'm like, do you like feel proud of yourself when you say you have a book to your future wife i need you in the mic like do you feel good about yourself when Mm -hmm. you say that does that 
do something for you Mm -hmm. because maybe I'm just, maybe I'm just me, Mm. (laughs) but I'm like, how are you going to write a book to me? And you don't even know me, but no, he said like, he's plugging. Like, I'm just like that. That is not very personal to me. Like if, if my husband sitting right here wanted to do something for me or write a letter to me or something like that, it would mean the most to me that he's including things that we've been through, our memories, um, things that he knows about me, things that he knows I like. So these generic A letters mm-hmm. <laughs> that you have in a book to anybody who agreed to be your wife on Married at First Sight is just not doing it for me. And it's, I actually it's wrote a freaking book. generic. <laughs> so it's like, but but my thing is you have to understand what he's doing. He's plugging. Yeah. He's he's basically saying what what he said was my boy got a band. I have a book. Yeah. He's not talking about himself. He's talking about what basically like what I've done mm-hmm. and what you can p- potentially purchase. You get what I'm saying? So, right. So he's basically just marketing right now. He's pro- well, not marketing. He's promoting right now, basically. Yeah. Yeah. So Ikechi says, you know, one of M.M.'s friends was sauce and she was just, you know, telling him how great um, M.M. was. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we see like Courtney saying like, girl, he prayed for you and all that type of stuff. I don't even know why he had to mention that. It's a wedding. Yeah. People get lit. People have a good time. I don't even know why that was like part of your conversation. Like, are you trying to poke fun of her friends and family now? He probably like, was talking about the do over. Talking about like, yeah, we got a little too saucy. No, because he didn't get asked the do over question. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm no. thinking it. I'm thinking it, it was, was unnecessary. I thought it was a do over for all of them. No, for all of them to answer. It. No, it was, it was about David and what he said to Michelle. That was the do over question. Mm. So Camille's friend is telling her that Thomas cheated. Yeah. Um, she said it was a hit to the heart, um, but she asked for context and it sounded like it was something that was coming to an end. She doesn't take it lightly, um, but she can, you know, after asking the questions, put it into context, which made her feel like she could move forward. Yeah. Ikechi, um, again, found it weird that people kept telling um, him that M.M. was such a good person. Mm -hmm. um, And it just kind of felt like, you know, are they kind of trying to convince me of something? Mm. And it felt kind of like a red flag to him. I'm like, you are the red flag. Okay. Potentially. (laughs) Camille was liking Thomas, um, but she did feel like he was more reserved. Yeah. I I don't know. I would feel weird, even though Ikechi did a lot of things to poke fun at you about. Mm -hmm. I would feel weird if everybody kept coming to me saying you are a good person. You are a good person. No, they're saying Amem's a good person. No, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Like, I'm saying you as in, like, my wife. Okay. I'm saying I will feel weird if everybody kept coming up to me saying you are, you are such a good person. Mm-hmm. Like, you are such a good person. I'd be like, hey, I, I, like, I get it. You mm-hmm. get what I'm saying? Like, I'm I'm not automatically going up to somebody and thinking they are a bad person. But if everyone keeps coming up to me throughout the reception and things of that nature saying you are a good person, I am going to be like, all right, I got it. I got it. Okay. So it was rough for David seeing Michelle's breakdown. Mm -hmm. He feels more concerned the fact that he was in the same room with her and didn't notice that she was going through all of this. And Mm -hmm. he feels like he should have caught it. Well, it's kind of hard to do that when she's a stranger and she ran off to the woman's bathroom. Yeah. You know? Well, uh, we learned that Ikechi and Amem, they fell right to sleep. I mean, all the couples pretty much did. And there Mm -hmm. wasn't anything exciting going on for them um, Mm. their first night together. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's all. Well, in this episode, she asked him. How many pair of glasses do he wear? I I was hoping that you would have wrote this down because this is very important because this actually describes his whole character. Yes. Right? She said, how many glasses do you own? He says, a lot. Didn't give her a number and things like that. And then she's like, you know, um, basically because I never seen you wear the same glasses twice. Mm Mm-hmm. Right. And he was like, yeah, da, 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 da. And then like he kind of got defensive in a way. And she basically like, no, I'm just giving a compliment. There's no need to be defensive. Well, she asked, like, are they prescription or no? That's it right here. Yeah. Because she said by the number of glasses you have, they are not prescription glasses. Uh huh. So he says it's them is for them to protect my eyes. Yeah. So they're fake glasses. Yeah. A man has over 30 pairs of fake glasses. Yeah. Why are you wearing fake glasses? Mm-hmm. Like, and it kind of gives off like, what are you trying to portray yourself as? Yeah. Do you get like what I'm he's saying? putting on. Yeah. Like, 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 like I have no problem with you having a pair or two of fake glasses. But the thing about it is it, the reason why he responded that way is because without Keisha even knowing she, she caught him. In she something. caught him in a lie. 
do. You get what I'm saying? Like, 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 why is why is she wondering if my glasses are prescription? Whole time, because you fake. Whole time, she <laughs> likes them because she like he got dope glasses. This ain't the yeah. first time I heard somebody say he catch be wearing dope glasses. No, like I like his glasses. His style so, from so what I've seen it, seems pretty cool. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So Keisha not even trying to catch him, yeah. but he's on the defense because he's like, oh, they gonna find out my glasses fake. Mm-hmm. Like, like, no, like, I really like the glasses, and he felt the heat under that, and that really described Ikeche as a whole person right there. Oh, really? A man who will put on these glasses, they're fake, because you, 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 guess what? When I wear glasses, I give a look. Yeah. I, I am portraying something, I'm into art, you know, I'm... It, it, Y'all know what it is when, like, somebody wear the glasses. You mm-hmm. get what I'm saying? So it's like, okay, this is your disguise. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And Keisha found it out without her even trying. Yeah. Listen, what do y'all think about that? That was good. I didn't pick it up like I that. Thought, I thought you would have got it down. I thought you would have picked up on it. I was like, this is this why it was so good. Like, Ikeche is wearing a disguise, literally. Mm. He has over 30 disguises. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, that's basically what it is. Anything else? That's it. I need y'all to subscribe, like, share, comment. Let me know what y'all think about this after party. We see y'all. Bye.